Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. There it is. Yeah. Wonder if he's in. We'll soon find out. Look him over close. You gotta know how he stacks up. Yeah, I know. Hope he doesn't recognize us. He won't. Come on. Morning, boys. Morning, sir. Are, uh, are you the marshal here in Dodge? Yeah, that's right. My name is Dillon, Matt Dillon. Uh, Thompson's our name. I'm Jim. This is my brother, Will. Hey, I'm glad to know you. This is my sidekick, Chester Proudfoot. Pleased to meet howdy, you. Howdy, howdy. Yeah, Mr. Dillon, we're after some information. Huh? What kind of information? Well, you see, Will and I just brought a trail herd up from the Pecos country, mm -hmm. around 2,000 head. We're holding them downriver a few miles. Oh, toward Walnut Creek? Yeah, I guess that's what they call it. You see, we plan to drive them on up toward Wyoming and put them on grass for a couple of months. We got to thinking we might sell them here if we could get a fair price. Well, you shouldn't have any trouble. The market's good right now. So we've heard. And the only thing is, we we don't know any buyers here. We were wondering if you might have an idea or two. I see. Well, uh, let me see. I suggest you go talk to Clem Bates. He runs the bank down the west end of Front Street. Mm. Clem Bates, huh? Yeah, he'll know of any buyers that happen to be in town. Might even buy the herd himself if it's in good condition. Well, we'll go right down and see him now, Mr. Dillon. And uh, much obliged to you, sir. <laughs> Forget it. Coming, Will? Yeah. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Marshal. Thank you. Same to you. Goodbye. Well, he seemed like a couple of nice men, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. A couple of strange ones, Chester. Wonder what they're here for. Why to sell a herd of cattle? You heard what they said. Chester, when's the last time a trail driver came in here and asked me where to sell his cattle? Well, I don't recollect that one ever did before, but all the same. Of course they... not. They go to the bank or one of the saloons. They don't come to the jail. Then why do you figure the Thompsons did? Well, I got an idea they might be sizing me up. I think that's the kind of information they wanted. But why? I don't know. Maybe they're planning something they think I might interfere with. Uh, what do you say we ride out to Walnut Creek and find out if they really got a herd, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon, whatever you say. That older one, Jim. You know, there's something familiar. I can't quite place it. Thompson Brothers, huh? Well, come on, Chester, let's ride. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Well, they got a herd, all right, Mr. Dillon. Yes, yeah, so they have, Chester. Well, let's drop in on them, huh? Come on. Smoke's coming up behind those willows. Must be their camp. Yeah, I guess so. These cattle are carrying a Circle Bar T brand. I never heard of it. It's like the Thompson brothers, Chester. I never heard of them either. At least not by that name. Camp looks deserted, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I... Right, right, we are! Oh, 
Somebody coming out of the wagon there. Yeah, he must have been asleep or... Well, well, well. You fellas better turn them horses around. Hello, Houston. Dylan, I... I didn't recognize you. Well, now that you have, why don't you put the rifle down? Well, sure, Marshal. I... I got no quarrel with you. You used to figure you did. Well, I... How long you been working for the Thompsons, Houston? Just a couple of months. I ran into them down on the Pecos and hired out for the drive. Did you know them before that? No. No, I just happened to run into them, and I heard they was looking for riders. Riders? I never knew you to hire out for anything but gunslinging. Why don't you let bygones be bygones, Marshal? A, a man can change. Maybe. Now, you take me out. I don't hold no grudges. You run me out of town last year, and I was pretty sore about it, but, but not anymore. I'm I'm willing to forget it. If you do, you'll be making a mistake, Houston. Now, look, Marshal. I told you to get out of Dodge City and stay out. That still goes. You understand me? All right, Marshal. That's the way you want it. I'm not in Dodge City. Not yet. <laughs> They don't seem to be in here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, we'll wait, Chester. They will be sooner or later. Well, it was a real dull day up until now. Oh, hi, you kidding? Good to see you, Matt. Uh, Chester? Hmm? Uh, you're on your own. What? Uh, uh, stick around, though, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. See you later, Miss Kitty. All right, Chester. You like a drink? Not now, thanks, Kitty. I, uh... I was looking for a couple of strangers in town, the uh, Thompson brothers. Oh, yeah. They were in earlier. Seemed very pleasant, quiet, real polite. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. People aren't always what they seem to be, Kitty. Well, are they mixed up in something, man? No, no, no. I don't know. Well, then what do you mean? I don't think their name is Thompson. And I don't think they came here to sell cattle. But they brought a herd in. Yeah, I know, I know that. I'm pretty sure I've seen that older brother somewhere before. Somewhere, sometime. You're suspicious of everybody, aren't you, Matt? <laughs> Are you going to start that again? All right, all right. <laughs> but you got the wrong attitude, you know. You miss a lot that way. Yeah? Yeah. Someday you're going to miss... Over here at the Oh, bar, there they man. are now. I came in with Clem Bates. Uh, will you excuse me, Kitty? Sure, Matt, sure. When you're through, come back. I'll be here. All right, Kitty, I'll see you. Hiya, Clem. I just bought myself 2,000 head of the finest cattle that's come north all summer. Yeah, they are in good shape. I rode out that way this afternoon. Marshal, we want to thank you again for putting us in touch with Mr. Bates. We're as satisfied with the deal as he is. How about a drink, Matt? Uh, thanks, Clem. Later, maybe, huh? Uh, Mr. Thompson... Do you know that you got one of the crookedest gunslingers in this part of the country working for you? No, I didn't know it. Who do you mean? Man who calls himself Houston Jack. Houston Jack? Is he back in town? Well, not back in town, exactly. I ran into him out at the trail camp. I ordered him out of Dodge a year ago, Mr. Thompson. The order still stands. That's funny. He didn't tell us he'd ever been in Dodge. Well, I thought maybe he didn't. That's why I figured I'd better let you know about it. I'm glad you did, Marshal. Of course, with the herd sold, we'll be paying the boys off tomorrow, and that'll be that. Then back to Texas. The sooner the better. Well, meantime, there's nothing to prevent us from having a sociable drink or two. Holly, set him up over here. Mr. Dillon. What? Oh. Uh, will you boys excuse me a minute, Sure, please? go right ahead. Sure, Marshal. What are you going to have, boy? Yeah, what is it, Sammy? Could you spare me a dollar, Mr. Dillon? I need a drink off a of bed. Oh, Sammy, you know what always happens? First it's one drink, and then it's ten. And I always end up by having to run you in. Oh, not this time, Mr. Dillon. I... Well, what's the matter, Sammy? Them fellas you're with, you know them, Mr. Dillon? Well, their name's Thompson. They're brothers. Huh? 
No, that's not their name. Well, then what is it? Meet you, Water. Gotta get out of here, Mr. Dillon. Wait a minute, Sammy. What the devil are you talking about? No, no, no nothing, Mr. Dillon. Honest, I... Uh, just remember something. I, uh, I, I gotta go right now. Well, how about that drink? Uh, some other time, Mr. Dillon. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll remember it, though. Go, uh, goodbye, Mr. Dillon. Here, what's wrong with Sammy, Matt? Did he smell a drink somewhere? <laughs> yeah, he must have. I don't know what you said to him, Marshal, but he sure went out of here looking like he'd seen a ghost. Well, Sammy's seen a lot of different things at different times. Maybe he did see a ghost. I can't figure where he got to, Mr. Dillon. And I looked in all the places he usually hangs out, but there wasn't any sign of him. Well, the ways of a drunkard and the ways of a woman, Chester, they're beyond all human knowledge. Yes, sir, I guess they are, Mr. Dillon. There's one thing certain, though. As blurry-eyed as he is, Sammy recognized those Thompson brothers. And that's more than I can do. Well, maybe there's nothing to recognize. Maybe you just think you've seen them before. Yeah, maybe. Well, there's no use going back to Texas Trail. That's one saloon Sammy will stay clear of. I just don't know where to look, Mr. Dillon. I'll swear... Wait, wait a minute, Chester. Hmm? Oh, Thompson's coming out of the saloon. No, I mean across the street. There's somebody by the corner. That... By heaven, that's Sammy. Yes, and he's got a rifle. I got you, boys. Sammy, you fool! Over there by the corner. Come on, Chester. He must have been crazy, Mr. Dillon. He must have been out of his mind. Yeah, I guess. One side. Let me through here, please. Let me through. Will you let us through? Sammy. Mr. Dillon, I... I used... could use that drink now. Thought I'd get the reward. I... <laughs> Sammy? Is he dead? Yeah. We sure hated to do it, Marshal. We had nothing against this man. Didn't even know him, in fact. But I guess you saw what happened. Yeah, I saw it. He threw a rifle on you, tried to kill you. You couldn't do anything else. I can't figure it, Marshal. My brother and me didn't have no quarrel with this fellow. Well... Sammy drank a lot. He wasn't always in his right mind. But you won't be held. It was out and out self-defense. Thanks, Marshal. Thanks a lot. Come on, Will. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Well, it's too bad, Mr. Dillon. Sammy never meant no harm to anybody. He did to the Thompsons, Chester. And I can't figure it. Why did he do it? Because he recognized them, I guess. Say, did you see them draw after he fired? Yeah. Yeah, I saw them. They're fast, Mr. Dillon. Ma. Ma. Oh, Kitty. I heard him down the street calling for Doc. I was hurt. Sammy got himself killed. Oh. Poor little guy. Yeah. Matt, you got trouble, too. What do you mean? Houston Jackson, town. What? He's over at the saloon now, looking for you. Matt, he says he's going to kill you. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... Adventure on your mind? Then keep tuned. The Gene Autry Show is straight ahead on most of these same CBS radio stations, bringing you the Melody Ranch Gang and Gene Autry songs. Tarzan's straight ahead, too, tonight involved with some fanatic headhunters in darkest Africa. There's another true police case on gangbusters this evening. And Broadway is my beat. Offers mystery fiction that's packed with excitement. They're all ahead tonight on CBS Radio. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. 
I just can't figure it, Mr. Dillon. I never thought Houston would have the nerve. Well, it's like a lot of things tonight, Chester. None of a figure. Mr. Dillon, you don't suppose he's going to set you up for the Thompsons? No. No, they got their horses and left. They're not in here. Well, we'll soon find out. Come on. Watch the boys at the tables, Chester, and keep them off my back, huh? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Maybe I wanted to leave town just at that time. I'll tell you one thing for sure. It wasn't that tin horn marshal that made me do it. You notice he's staying plenty clear of me. Uh... Hello, Houston. Dillon, you got nothing on me. I told you to get out of town, didn't I? I know, but you, you... You still got... I told you to stay out, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, but you had no right. What do you think you are? Why'd you come back? That's my business. Mine too, maybe. You're under arrest. Stay back, Dylan. I'm warning you. You can't keep backing off forever, Houston. You'll have to stop sometime. I said you're under arrest. I heard what you said. I got ears, Dylan, and I know I'm going to get He's bolted out the door, Mr. Dillon. He's getting away. Be careful, Master. He could be waiting outside. Well, you drew, Mr. Dillon. Why didn't you shoot? Because you didn't draw. You can't. There he goes. Well, come on, Chester. <laughs> Can't be far ahead of us, Mr. Dillon. Uh, he's heading for the ranch camp. I still can't figure it, Mr. Dillon. It just don't add up. Chester, sir, help me if you say that once more. I'm... I'm... What's the matter, Mr. Dillon? Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Oh, oh. Oh. What are we stopping for, Mr. Dillon? He's getting farther away every minute. Chester, I owe you an apology. You're right. It don't add up. Well, it's... Just the way of talking I have, I didn't intend... No, no, I mean it, Chester. Everything Houston Jack did tonight, it doesn't add up at all. He knew I'd jump him if he came into town. He's tough, but he's not that tough. He's not the kind of a man to force a gunfight just for a chance to show off. Yeah, but there wasn't any gunfight, Mr. Dillon. No. He turned tail and ran. That's not like Houston, either. You'll be a laughing stock from here to the Pecos. Well, it's like I said, it just don't add... I forget what I was going to say. Chester, suppose the Thompsons wanted to get us out of town for a while, huh? You mean they put Houston up to that Dido so we'd chase off after him? Well, there's only one way I know to find out. Come on! Dodge is kind of spooky this time of night, Mr. Dillon. Pretty, though. All shadows and moonlight. Yeah. Man could do a fair job of shooting tonight. My. Sometimes I think Kitty is right about you, Mr. Dillon. Meaning? No heart. Maybe not, Chester. Uh, no offense, Mr. Dillon. Oh, forget it. Forget it. You know, Chester, there's something about moonlight connected with those Thompson brothers. I wish I could remember what... Chester, hmm? don't... Don't look. Just ride straight ahead. Keep riding. There are four horses tied over there by the bank. Uh-huh. So that's it. One of them's been run. He's wet. 
I can see it in the moonlight. Houston must have circled back. Him and the Thompsons. Yes, but what about that fourth horse, Mr. Dillon? It's probably Clem Bates. They'd have to have him. The vault's locked at night. All right, around the corner now. Mm. They may be watching from the front windows. Thompson brothers. I wouldn't never have figured them for a bank holder. Yeah, well. All right, we'll leave the horses here. Slip back to the side address. Yeah. Ho, ho. Well, what about that moonlight now, Chester? Well, I guess it's bright enough a man could... A man could do a fair job of shooting tonight. No sign of life, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. They're in there, though. Side door's open. Mm. Maybe one other sort of kind. I came from the door. Come on, Justin. All right, get fight against the wall. They'll have to show themselves to fire at us. Same as Dylan. I think they shut that door. Yeah. All right, let's move in easy. Yes, sir. It's shut, all right. I'm going to try the door. If it opens, flip a couple of shots in. Yes, sir. It's bolted. All right, cover me, Chester. Here it goes. I think I hear him running inside. Yeah, one more. Uh, they crashed out through the front window, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, come on. Oh, there's Clem on the floor. They must have laid him out. Easy, Chester. They may be waiting outside for us. There they go. They're making a run for it. Yeah, come on. Let's get out through this window. Mr. Dillon? Uh, Mr. Dillon? It's all right, Chester. Uh, Nick's a rib, I think. I'm, I'm all right. Though. I thought for a minute there that they'd... Yeah, yeah, I know. Looks like one of them stayed behind. That shot came from the corner of the livery stable over there. Maybe I can... What's the matter, Dylan? You're supposed to be good. It's Houston, all right. He's back at that old stone well. Yeah. Stay here and keep him pinned down, Chester. I'm going up on the roof through the trap door back here. All right, Mr. Dillon. Watch yourself. Yeah. Throw a shot or two at him. Keep him busy, huh? Yes. You gotta do better than that, Dylan. I will, Houston. Don't worry about that. Now, if I can just get this open with a... There. Now... South corner there. Put me right over him. And then I... Wait a minute. Moonlight night? And a bank. So that's who they are. Houston! Dylan, where are you? Up here. You're under arrest. Drop your gun. I'll drop it. Last chance, Houston. Your last chance. All right, then. So long, gunslinger. I reckon that did it, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Moonlight's real bright up here, Chester. All right, Chester, I'm coming down. Uh, 
fellows. Uh, don't, no, no, no. Mr. Bates don't. is coming, too, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he's not bad off. They must have slapped him with a gun barrel on the way out. Clem? Clem? Clem, can you hear me? Matt? Who? Oh, oh, Matt, thank you. Uh, Chester, get that chair over there. Yes, here you are. All right, give me a hand with it. Easy, girls. Come on, Mr. Bates. There you are. Now, what happened, Clem? Are they trying to make you open the vault? That's right. It was those Thompson brothers, man. Yeah, I know. They fooled me plenty. Thought they were fine fellas. I've been drinking with them all evening. Well, you never know, Clem. They get away with anything? No. I was about to give in and open the vault when you rode by. That got him kind of upset. Well, there's no harm done, then. Houston Jack was long overdue for killing. We gonna go after the Thompsons, Mr. Dillon? Where, Chester? They could have gone in any one of a dozen directions. There'd be no chance of trying to track them till morning. Somehow, I don't think we'll get them even then. I think I ought to get something done about this head of mine, Matt. It's, it's giving me fits. Yeah, I'll go with you, Clem. I gotta tell the doc about Houston. Chester, I guess you better go over to the depot and wake up Mr. Hightower. I haven't put a wanted bulletin on the wire. For the Thompson brothers, huh? No, Chester. I've recognized them finally. Their name isn't Thompson. Well, what name do I put in the bulletin, Mr. Dillon? Just say, wanted for attempted bank robbery in Dodge City, Frank and Jesse James. <laughs> Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell and Vic Perrin, with Paul Dubov, Joe Duvall, and Lou Krugman. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Sundays in the daytime, CBS Radio brings you a unique series of political debates, a program called Pick the Winner, on which the major parties select their highest authorities to discuss important election issues. Tomorrow on most of these same CBS Radio stations, hear another major election issue debated. Here, Pick the Winner. And don't forget, to make the full use of what these programs tell you, register so you may vote this fall. This is Roy Rowan speaking. Remember, every Sunday we extend a cordial invitation to great music on the CBS Radio Network.